be the progenist dad in the family. How do we do it? Because to take away the confusion from our minds, I ask you on put some marker. You see, on on the sea coast, you will see, especially in areas like this, lighthouses. The lighthouses are there. And the worse the weather, the worse the storm, the more the sun, the lies out, stands out to guide the ships from, you know, terrible rocks that can shatter their ships. Make sure that we don't shatter our lives, our future, our happiness, to prevent that in that stormy water, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent our prophets and sent their wife. It is very sad that the lighthouse is there and the captain of the ship says, I don't care whether it's sunny, I will keep on going to my destruction. It is there for you to find out who is, why, where is the lighthouse of your life. And it is for you to find it out yourself. Don't say, I will go and listen to the Maulana and tell me uh, what to do. No. You have to find out. Each one of you have to dig deep, learn deep, fathom deep, dive deep to find the truth for yourself. And once you have found the truth, it is so nourishing, it is so beautiful. It is so tasteful that you don't want to part with it. And we attach everything according to the comfort and the worldly prestige it gives to us. You can wear a beautiful cotton shirt and it is very nice, good material. But the moment a label is put there, brand name is put there, the price goes up. Anyway, Allah says, don't wear the false pride of this earth. Don't wear the false pride. It won't make any difference to you. One day, our prophet was sitting patiently one day, and in the audience, a nice young man, a gentleman from one of the Kabilas came, beautifully dressed, and he came and sat down. And he sat down to a person, and with part of his clothes was stuck under the lap of the other person. And he looked at him, and he wanted to pull it out, and he wanted to suffer. The prophet saw it. Very simple story, but very big. He says, why have you tried to separate yourself from him? Yeah. Is will his old dirty clothes, not so rich clothes, torn to in pieces, right? Do you think his poverty will get to you? Do you think his clothes may not be as scented as yours? Do you think the odor will get to you? The man was good. He was a good man, right? He realized his mistake. And he says, oh, yeah, I am it now. I am a rich man. I have made a mistake. You see, it's always nice to admit one's mistake. It is a brave thing to admit one's mistake. It is still greater, more brave thing to admit our sins and our faults in the presence of Allah. The person said, Oh Rasulullah, I'm a very rich man. Today, in your very presence, I have made a mistake. Ya Rasulullah, he has blessed the poor man. Oh my brother, I'm a rich man. I'm ready to give half my state, half my riches, all to you for the hurt or the pain I might have caused you. Right? And the man turned round and said, I don't want it. He said, but I will give it to you without any obligation. He said, he said why don't you want it? He said, it may, I don't want it because tomorrow my mind might start 
changing the differences between rich and poor. You all can be rich and you can all be poor. You can be with an inverted comma, filthy rich, filthy rich, they say in this world, filthy rich as a millionaire, a trillionaire. But you can be very poor with it. It is far, far greater to be rich with it than to be rich outside the world. The richness of this world can disappear now. You will see in this the very city of Edinburgh, you will read in paper, that fellow had billions and millions of dollars and power and sterling all gone. He is on the pavement today. But the richness within you, no robber can take it, no thief can touch it, no, no one can hit it. You can sleep without any alarm, without any security system because that richness Allah says, I will protect it. He is Muhafiz, he is Hafiz. Right? He protects it. When he protects it, nobody can touch it. And that great wealth is what you have to work with. People say, well, I this is my barka, you see, look at the wall. Look, the plaster is falling there, the cobwebs there, that is not clean, the bathroom is there, the washroom is broken seats and things. No, 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 no. I go to university and I, you know, I, I, my house is very neat and clean. Get your Imam Barga right first. Get the washroom clean. Look at that corridor. Look at that big hall. Half of it is full of mess. Get that move. Then I will come. They are not interested to come to look and hear the richness of the, the recitation of the Quran, the richness and the beauty of the Hadith. They are not coming here to listen to the khutbah and the advice that are coming to them. Right? They are interested in the temples and the churches which have gold ornaments around them. Beautiful paintings, right? Around them, with bars and electric and everything of grandeur there. That grandeur can disappear. But the grandeur, the tohfa, the grip <coughs> that you receive from the household of a prophet, that cannot be matched by anybody. So I ask my brothers and sisters. Who do not come to this because it's boring, it's dull, there is no music, there is no gay and pomp and danger. Huh? There are walls and everything of no proper death decor and this. <coughs> you want to know? You see the masjid, masjid and Nadabi in Medina, you see the photograph, beautiful. Marvel, green, beautiful. You know what was the masjid when our great prophet was there? It was made of dry mud and clay. And you know the first of the masjid was not made of marble from Italy or from India. It was just dry mud. He sat on the mat. All the skin of the camera, the height of the camera. And that is what he gave to his great daughter. Shahadadi Akonai, of the Shahadadi, the princes of all God's creation, our great prophet didn't have give any beautiful, you know, feathered, so many down feathered things to sleep on. If on that she would sleep, on that she would eat, on that she would recite the Quran, on that she would teach Hassan and Hussain about And that is why the world appreciates Islam 
that it's so of great value and they find it dangerous. They find it. The world today is not afraid of bombs, of guns, of weapons. The world of today is afraid of Islam. Right? They should not fear Islam. They should fear the hopeless Muslims who have adopted Islam as their cover. The Islam today is the cover for these wretched Muslims who go on killing his free and death and destruction. Right? And that is the Islam you have to keep away from. You have to come, come and protect the Islam and the faith of half hours the great man. Because I tell you, I said to you, dig deep, dive deep, understand, understand Islam, then you will love it. I will tell you a little story. Today, unfortunately for me, the world clock is working. <laughs> Great empires are built with power of weapons. But great empires can be challenged by without a weapon. That is the Islam we follow. That is the Islam we admire. That is the Islam we love. I will tell you in this story. Right? Aurangzeb was an emperor in India, Mughal emperor. When he became emperor, his kingdom was the largest of all in the history of India. It extended from Mayur, which is Burma, almost beyond Afghanistan, almost going towards Iran. Right? That was a great kingdom. He got that kingdom by murdering and killing his own brothers. But was leaving the side. He had one hatred, and his hatred was the religion that protects the Mahindu against the Zalim. You know Badish, Jabed, Badish, right? He was the king. He was a murderous king, right? Uh, and as you see in Firam's house, Allah and his Mashiach said, I will have Musa grow up. And his tree is now keeps the religion itself. Again and again and again. Aurangzeb had a daughter. And I forget his name, so I have written it down. Her name was, I think, uh, Zaban Nisa. Zaban Nisa, I think that was her name. Yeah, Zaban Nisa Mukhti. She had a teacher, yeah, Ali, called Maria who taught the life of the Prophet and the Alibi. She, she was the most beautiful of the children of Aurangzeb, the most intelligent of the children of Aurangzeb. At the age of 21, she wrote her first volume of poetry. Right? And she told her father that I believe in the faith of uh, life and the teachings of our great prophet and his Ahlul Bayt. When she became of age, then 3,300,000 gold coins were distributed in her name as a sadaka by Aurangzeb. So she was the most beloved child of the king Aurangzeb. She said, I do not give up my religion, my faith. The father had her prison in a fort in Delhi. His own daughter, the most beloved child, the child whom she he loved most, was put in a fortress. And she, she, after another 20 years of imprisonment, she was poisoned to death. The king's daughter cannot be poisoned to death unless they have the king's and send him permission to do so. He had his own beloved daughter killed for 
otherwise we'll be good for that. And he was the king. Now listen to this. Then his Mufti, his Mufti Adin, his Ayala came to me and said, Time is a Shia from taking our procession on the day of Ashura. Banning it. He said, okay. And Munadi, there was a, a, a sound, a person going around the whole town giving Munadi an address, telling them, we banned the procession. Right? And the people of Delhi were afraid, just like the Saddam stand. Right? And then, there was no procession, but the mojizat of Ayur Bhat is that their love. You see, Uppe Muhammad Ali Muhammad can make you stronger than a lion. Right? And so then Allah says, no, Haq has to win against Batil. Right? Has to defeat the, these wrongdoers. And the old woman, she had wrinkles on her face that you could see that it was as if cut by pieces of knife. And she was back. So, you know the Lala Kela, the fortress in Delhi, where the king emperor lived in the palace. She went right in the middle of the chalk, the square there. She sat down there. The old woman. And she started reciting the Dara and Masai of Ayurveda. <coughs> News straight went to the king. Oh Ayurveda. Oh Shahanshah. Oh, uh, your authority is being challenged. That somebody is saying, I will challenge the king's authority. Let me see what he can do. He could have sent his soldiers to go and kill her and get her little her. He was so angry. How dare somebody take the name of Ahlul Bayt and Ashura against my permission? He said, I will do it. He went on his climb, got onto his horse. And his soldiers followed him. And by that time, half of Delhi had gathered around there to see what is going to be done. Will she be beheaded? Will she be given whips and lashes? What will happen? The whole town gathered. There was no, uh, uh, what you call, Edinburgh and Glasgow playing football. It wasn't that. The only thing was this is getting happening in that city. Whole Delhi gathered there. And the woman sat, and the king was coming, the emperor, or not there. And she didn't even bother to look up and give him a look. She didn't, she didn't look up with him. She didn't even bother to look at him. He was, he was so insignificant in her mind against the name she was reciting, Mashallah. He said, oh woman, will you stop? She says, no, and she started writing. Our Zayn could do nothing. The great emperor who killed his own brothers to get onto the throne, right, got on his horse back and back into the Lal Pela, the fortress, and shut the gate. He was locked inside the fortress while the old woman taking the name of Muhammad Ali Muhammad was free in the square of Delhi. This is how the battles of Islam have been won. This is how the battles you should fight. This is how the battles can be made into victory without a weapon, the way the old woman defeated the Shah and Shah of India. Especially, I plead, go and ask my younger brothers and sisters in this town, please come to this fight. Come. Don't look at the walls and this. Come and listen to the words of wisdom of Muhammad Ali. Right? These, these walls will give you nothing. When you are in the tunnel, you cannot say there is no good sanitation, the washroom is not clean or fresh there. Right? When, when the fashar recovery will start, you will not say the bathroom is not nice and the corridor is not nice and uh, the, there is so much kachara in the corridor. No, when the Vaishnava is there, the moment you say, I am going to recite the 
الشويه لما صارت انفزار لو اهل البيت تقول لي دي دي ساكن الفرنج اورم ديف تو فريش ديفل سي جو اوي ميك ذس بليس ليت ذا ويندوز اوف هيفن اوبن انتو ذس ليتل توم اوف يوز ذوز توم ويل بيكم بارت اوف ذا جنرال For the others, it will be hell and fire. For you who come and sit here, the fragrance of Jannah will come, the food of heaven will come, the blessings of Muhammad the Ali. I have my sister Zainab who 
حبیبی سے مذاہب اتنی فرشتے ہیں 